there will be a lot of documentation material that will be presented today. This material is accessible online, and the goal of the webinar is not to cover the detail, the details of these resources, uh, but rather to explain how you can find what kind of information and how you can use this material to improve with Arcadia. So please try and avoid questions related to the specifics of these resources, the, the contents, and uh, if needed, you can just go and read them online after the webinar. Everything will be fully accessible. Okay, and now let me introduce our speakers for today. So Jean-Luc Bois, he is a Director, Engineering and Modeling in Thales Defense Mission Systems Business Unit and Technical Directorate. He's been an architect of real-time and near-real-time computing and mission systems on civil and mission aircraft and fighters. And he is uh, the principal author of the Arcadia method and an active contributor to the definition of other methods and tools. He's been involved in coaching activities across all Thales business units, in particular on flagship and critical projects. He will be uh, today uh, introduced by Juan Navas, who's an MBSE expert in Thales Corporate Engineering, who leads the team that accompanies managers and architects implement MBSE practices on, oper on sorry, operational projects to improve their engineering performance. Uh, Juan is a system architect with more than 10 years of experience. He has a PhD in computer science, uh, a Master of Science in Control and Computer Science, and electronics and electrical engineering degrees. And that's all for me today. Uh, you are welcome online, Juan and Jean-Luc, and the floor is all yours. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Good morning or afternoon or night sometimes uh, for all of you. Thanks for attending. Yeah, hi, all. Uh, yeah, as uh, Laurent uh, introduced, uh, uh, today's webinar is uh, very focused on documentation, on knowledge resources, and uh, Jean-Luc uh, will uh, present uh, again a, a new uh, gold mine of uh, resources. Uh, but before that, we wanted to, uh, to present the already existing resources because there, there are a lot of uh, resources. So... Yes, yeah, great. So, uh, no, yeah, the existing knowledge resources uh, to, to learn about uh, model-based systems engineering and uh, specifically on Arcadia and Capella, uh, many of them are free. And I will introduce uh, just uh, quite, I mean, briefly introduce what uh, the, the new ones uh, that will be uh, further uh, introduced by uh, Jean-Luc uh, afterwards. We all know that uh, learning is a process. Uh, it's not the same uh, for everyone, uh, but we can identify kind of uh, certain levels of uh, knowledge and expertise on any subject. And I wanted to, uh, to use the uh, Star Wars and the Jedi uh, metaphor uh, to introduce the kind of resources that could be useful for you uh, to reach a certain level and kind of a, a, a first uh, insight of the of the resources that we recommend you to uh, to study uh, first uh, to uh, to start your MBSC journey and then uh, go further uh, into uh, the level of uh, expertise so we will have uh, four levels uh, which start with the uh, i mean it's the jedi levels uh, initiate level padawan knight and master so at the beginning we are all initiates and when you are initiated on MBSC, uh, Arcadia, and Capella, uh, one of the first things that you need to know is that the tool itself it has, a, has a very comprehensive uh, help section. Uh, so uh, there are some hints uh, and, and tips and tricks. <laughs> uh, and one of the tips is that uh, you can uh, filter the, uh, the help uh, section in Capella to see one many specific uh, sections of this help and hence uh, uh, find information uh, easier. Uh, so, I mean, there are, there are the steps to uh, to read the manual and uh, there are, of course, a lot of material already in the help uh, section. Uh, I would recommend uh, some, uh, some readings uh, regarding the user manual uh, section. There is a tips and tricks section uh, when we uh, documented some of the, uh, of the various, um, I mean, uh, common uh yeah 
tips <laughs> uh, that we uh, put in place in our company. Uh, there is the model analysis and the model validation section. They are the more slightly more advanced topics like work a couple elements and many more. Uh, there is the diagram section, uh, the help which uh, introduce each uh, in each uh, diagram in Capella and what is supposed to be in the diagram. And there are of course the thematic highlights which are more slightly slightly related to the method. I really recommend the focus on state machines. The functional analysis to interface engineering section, which is one of the main differentiators of the Arcadia method with regards to other uh, architecting architecture methods and the interface and data modeling. Once you start with the uh, manual, uh, of course, you can uh, jump to the uh, to the official website, uh, which is uh, here when you will find uh, tons of information. Uh, and uh, some interesting sections like uh, getting started with installation tips. Uh, well, obviously, you, if you had the tool before, you don't need to read it. Uh, tutorials, uh, sample models, uh, a specific section about Arcadia and Capella with a method overview, uh, some uh, uh, studies, some comparisons between Arcadia and Capella and CSML, and a new section that will be introduced uh, today, which is called Arcadia Engineering Landscape. And you will also find a lot of returns of experience, case studies, and teaching uh, resources. So at this stage, you could be uh, you could jump to the uh, to the Capella YouTube channel, which is a quite a success uh, because we have our today uh, 109 videos, more than 7, 73 hours of knowledge from Thales and from many other organizations that are using or teaching Arcadia and Capella. We have more than 2,000 followers, 6,000 views per month, uh, more than 250,000 views since we since we started. Uh, there are, of course, some playlists that we, that we have curated for you. Uh, I uh, strongly recommend the Getting Started uh, playlist. Uh, we start with a three minutes presentation and then we jump to an eight minutes presentation, which is indeed translated into uh, uh, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese languages. Uh, and then you can, you can go through the uh, four main Arcadia perspectives in a set of uh, videos that uh, last a bit more than an hour. Uh, you can also go to the webinars playlist. Uh, we have today uh, 46 webinars. Uh, in a few weeks, there will be 47 with this one. Uh, and uh, we are counting. I mean, there are many webinars already uh, scheduled, uh, roughly one per month. Uh, so it will continue uh, growing. If you want to, uh, I mean, Stay tuned with the uh, uh, videos on the YouTube uh, Capilla, uh, YouTube channel. The only thing you have, to have to do is to subscribe to the channel and you will be notified uh, when there is a new material that is uh, published. So once you have uh, uh, covered this, uh, this knowledge resources, uh, we could consider you like a Padawan. Uh, but there are still a lot uh, to, to learn, of course. Uh, and uh, why, why uh, this uh, stage of uh, state of Padawan is interesting? Because as you see, uh, Padawan is not alone. Uh, Padawan is uh, mentored by a uh, Jedi master, Jedi Knight. Jedi Knight. Uh, and this uh, accompanying, accompanying uh, it's very important uh, for the uh, learning process. So regarding this, uh, there are a lot of resources as well. And let's start with the community and forums uh, resources. There is the official Capella forum uh, for which we have uh, 600 visitors last month, uh, 150 posts per month uh, and around uh, 15 new contributors each month. We also have the LinkedIn community. Uh, we have more than uh, 5,000 followers, so you can uh, follow us as well. We also have a Twitter account. Um, so I was asked, what, are, what about more recent uh, social networks like TikTok or Instagram? Well, uh, not yet. Maybe in the future, but not yet. Uh, then uh, you can uh, self-learn as, as well. Uh, and um, there is a new material that will be presented today for this uh, stage, which is the Arcadia User Guide. Uh, we hope to release a digital training soon, so stay tuned. Uh, and of course, there are there are traditional, I would say, uh, remote or inside uh, training. Uh, we uh, at Thales uh, we provide this kind of training, but we are not the only ones. Uh, 
because there is an ecosystem of uh, trainers uh, that uh, provide uh, different trainings uh, on Arcadia and Capella. So you can visit the services section in the Capella website to, uh, to get more information on this. Uh, the best way to progress is to learn from uh, mentors and from past experiences of those that have successfully implemented Arcadian Capella and BSC approach. That's why in our company, uh, we, we really focus on, on what we call coaching, uh, which is kind of a consulting, uh, which is a specific uh, uh, guidance and, and help and, and support, uh, very, I mean, specific to the context of the project that you are working in. So this, we call it coaching. Uh, we do it as well. And there are other organizations that uh, provide this kind of coachings. So you're, you're now on night. And night uh, doesn't have a mentor uh, and uh, a progress uh, rather alone by practicing. Uh, so you can still learn what from what the masters do. <clears throat> and related to this, there is a new material that will be presented today, which is called the Arcadia Reference, with a lot of information about the uh, engineering activities, the data model, uh, the capabilities, and the Arcadia Meta Model, which is a very recurrent uh, question in the forum, uh, in the Capella Forum. But there is also the reference books, uh, Jean Luc's uh, book, uh, of course, uh, and uh, Pascal Rock uh, tool, uh, which is more uh, focused into, uh, into Capella tool. And of course, there are uh, a lot uh, of uh, scientific papers and publications that have been uh, released and published uh, in the past years. Uh, so just to uh, cite it, uh, um, the, uh, the one that uh, we wrote together with uh, Jean-Luc and other uh, colleagues uh, that was uh, awarded the uh, best uh, paper, best CMBSC paper award in the uh, Incozi, uh, Symposium 2019, and a lot of uh, work uh, uh, by other uh, members of the uh, of the community and uh, especially academic members of the community. So you might wonder how to become a master, and in fact there is no uh, recipe for this. Uh, the only thing that we can do, and I, I'm pretty sure that Jean Luc, uh, who I could uh, call a master itself, uh, I could uh, confirm, uh, is that. Uh, well, I will get out uh, from a Star Wars uh, universe and get back to real and, and Greeks. And uh, I will refer to Seneca. Uh, what we teach, we learn. So practice and teach uh, is the only way, or only known, the best known way to become a, a master on any subject and in particular on MBC with Arcadia and Capital. So this is a very brief overview of the, uh, the resources that are available today uh, and an introduction of the resources that will be presented today by Jean-Luc. Uh, so uh, having said that, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce uh, Jean-Luc's uh, uh, part of the webinar. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Juan. Uh, so, um... Uh, I will quickly probe what we have added uh, uh, these days on, on the Capella website uh, regarding Arcadia. Here again, not for you to react or, or for us to discuss in details the contents, but rather for me to give you a, a kind of uh, uh, map and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, description of contents uh, uh, of all these uh, information so as for you to define your own itineraries uh, in this map. Uh, so first, uh, how objective is the fact that we have felt both uh, at OBO and Thales uh, level that uh, more and more users of Arcadia and Capella were seeking for uh, uh, more information, maybe better organized and, and uh, covering uh, many different kinds of issues uh, on the method. So some starts with history because it's also a matter of uh, experience, which is interesting of course for uh, all of you probably so why was the method created and tool for which purpose with which benefits the philosophy and and the orientations of uh, academia as well uh, so what are the objectives expected scopes specificities of, of the method uh, how, how does it take into account engineering issues and how does it try to contribute to, to solving those challenges what kind of major levels does it use for that uh, uh, the different principles of the method uh, uh, activities and contents, so drivers of each core perspective from operationalizes down to 
physical architecture, building strategy, and, and more. Uh, how to address major engineering issues uh, that we have mentioned using Arcadia and those different perspectives. Uh, what, what kind of uses of the model uh, are, uh, are suggested and possible uh, in order to address those issues. And more details uh, for implementation. So the detailed processes that we could consider uh, uh, to be adapted according to each concept and, uh, and the domain, of course. Uh, how and where are engineering data elaborated and how are they used in order to address those challenges and to contribute to engineering efficiency, what the formal definition of the language, and also some examples and samples of models. Uh, and last but not least, the return on, of experiments and hints for deployment according to what has been practiced and discovered uh, in different uh, real-life projects as well. So this is what uh, uh, we have decided to make available to the community. Uh, so I, I will browse quickly what uh, we have done here. So uh, you, you have already, you're already aware of the, of the book. Just to mention that thanks to our uh, Chinese colleague, uh, colleagues of, uh, I think it was Comac and partners, we also have a, a Chinese version uh, uh, along with uh, English and French, thanks to them. Um, so what we have did, added uh, now is a, a freely available uh, set of resources under the form of web or PDF documents, uh, uh, we, which intend to give a progressive uh, discovery of the different Arcadia concepts. Uh, so uh, we will quickly broad them uh, now, uh, starting from what we call the engineering landscape, which is just uh, a view of what kind of engineering Arcadia targets and what kind of engineering activities it expects to support. Uh, the Arcadia user guide uh, gives a first level of understanding of how Arcadia tries to address this set of um, engineering challenges. And then the Arcadia reference, which is split into parts, uh, uh, gives a more comprehensive and in-depth description of the different task activities, uh, engineering data that are built and used for these purposes and engineering capabilities and the way Arcadia support them and uh, a specific focus on the formal description of the uh, Arcadia language, which was uh, asked by several people in the community for a while. And as I mentioned, we also have added something that hopefully will have some value for you, uh, which is some questions and answers, which is a, a set of questions that has been raised by uh, operational projects. Uh, and uh, uh, I have collected the answers that I delivered to those projects, so as for you to have uh, some elements of, uh, of thought, and just a food for thought, not necessarily more, but hopefully it will inspire you uh, in your own uh, concerns and projects. Okay, so uh, 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 all together, they try to address uh, uh, a large scope to answer the different elements that we have uh, uh, seen on the previous slide and with uh, limited contribution, of course, of each of them, but you will discover that I won't detail. Let me now uh, just try to present um, quickly uh, those documents. So uh, starting with the Arcadia engineering landscape that I have mentioned. Uh, so uh, this landscape is uh, uh, and here again a kind of introduction to engineering, uh, at least the engineering that Arcadia considers uh, uh, in, in its way of answering and supporting it, and uh, the kind of, we could say, requirements, high level requirements that we expect on uh, Arcadia so as to support those engineering elements. So as you can see, it starts uh, with uh, uh, a definition of engineering stakeholders, uh, uh, well, which is our view of engineering stakeholders, not necessarily the one of each organization, and for each of them, a set of activities that it is expected to perform. I don't detail more, uh, but they are summarized in, in a global view of the different tasks for each of these stakeholders that we have seen. And then we en enter uh, um, uh, a, a first uh, notional view just of uh, what could be uh, some kind of engineering processes uh, that uh, uh, put uh, these uh, engineering activities uh, in, in orchestration. Okay, And so each of them, as you can see, is described in terms of uh, 
process with the contribution and activities of each of the different stakeholders involved in the process uh, according and of course to uh, the, the realization of the expectations that are in it. So this is the first part. So what kind of uh, what do we speak about when we speak about engineering supported by uh, Arcadia? And now what should we expect from Arcadia so as to uh, support that? So uh, there's the first uh, quick uh, introduction to Arcadia and concept. I don't detail, but you have seen most of it uh, on on the Capella website. And uh, we have just tried to specify what we expect from Arcadia by trying to start from um, uh, a quick view of, uh, of the E3 uh, 15 to 88 uh, uh, technical processes and the way uh, different uh, services that are expected from Arcadia can deliver so as to support those different elements. Okay, and those different services expected from Arcadia are described uh, uh, below. Uh, each of them being quickly described in terms of expectation, as you can see, uh, Arcadia shall and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, and of course, we also have tried to put a first view of how all these different services should orchestrate with each other so as to provide the uh, expectations and capabilities that are necessary to address the former engineering processes. So this is the Arcadia engineering landscape. Uh, so as you can see, just an introduction. Now, if you want to start to have some elements of solution on how uh, Arcadia can help, you can find them in, uh, not this one, but in uh, um, Arcadia user guide. So uh, this one is the first level of description of Arcadia content, as you can see. Uh, so starting by a high level view that uh, many of you are uh, well aware of, of the different uh, core perspectives of Arcadia and some complementary activities, which are a bit more detailed um, uh, at, at one level uh, more, as you can see. Uh, and uh, this uh, description uh, of first level uh, major activities is uh, uh, detailed uh, in, in the rest of this uh, document. So as you can see, for each of them, we have a set of uh, description um, uh, describing uh, so the, the different tests that we have seen, uh, notably uh, those that are depicted on this uh, picture. And for each of them, we have tried to give some elements, such as the engineering goals of these activities, the task to be completed, stop criteria, contributors, required competencies, uh, uh, and so on. And this uh, is described in the rest of the, this chapter. I don't detail more. First introduction of the major concepts that are used uh, by Arcadia according to the previous description. As you can see, very high level, but which gives the first uh, flavor of the data that are at the heart of notably the uh, Arcadia engineering perspectives, core perspectives and exploitations. And uh, just a very quick view of how all those uh, uh, Arcadia activities can contribute to building uh, uh, traditional um, reference documents uh, in norms and standards uh, and the kind of information that are used in other programs. So this is the second part. Um, now let's go to the third, uh, more in-depth presentation. We have seen the uh, engineering landscape, then the user guide. Now we enter uh, the reference. So we go into much deeper details in order to try to cover as a whole uh, 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 an in-depth description of those different elements that we have sketched up to now. Starting with activities. Okay, so. Um, uh, what we want to uh, to define is the Arcadia workflow as a whole. I just mentioned here this uh, picture because, as you can see, it's not only a matter of the major Arcadia perspectives, but also a set of uh, uh, major engineering activities that Arcadia intends to address and support as well. Many of uh, us have focused on this description-related uh, perspectives. But uh, engineering is much more than describing a need or a solution. It's solving problems. And for so, we have to address a set of engineering tasks that are uh, addressed at least on what Arcadia can bring to them. 
And based on this one, we have defined uh, 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 what we in, uh, expect from each of them, uh, um, notably focusing uh, and going into more details in uh, um, the, the contents of each of the structuring core perspectives that you have already seen, which are uh, detailed uh, one step further. Uh, and then we enter the uh, ex explicit uh, and global description uh, of each of those elements, refining one step further. As you can, we, as you can see uh, just right here, you have the same kind of definition, but uh, going into more details uh, as compared to the user guide with the full definition of the different activities, um, uh, uh, including the way to build uh, engineering data and, and the way to uh, uh, reuse engineering data in order to address all these elements. So as you can see, it's described in detail with the context of each engineering perspective activities and, and their context of it. So this is, in the reference of Arcadia, the activities and processes uh, description. Of course, here again, it's only uh, some, some proposals and, and some uh, formalized uh, elements in order for you to build your own processes and set of activities. It's up to you and it has to be, of course, first efficient and adapted to your own domain and context. The second part, of course, is data model, as you can imagine. Uh, so uh, the data model starts from what we have seen in the user guide going into deeper detail. And as you can see, not only needs and solution description, but also a bit more elements uh, in the first level of detail, of course, uh, among variabilities, architecture justification, uh, agile support, uh, uh, subsystems and solution elements, the description, IDD, and so on. And for each of them, we have described here again the different concepts, their relationships with each other, and uh, the way they are used, uh, the definition, of course, and the way uh, they are uh, uh, used uh, in order to um, to feed each other and to contribute to elaborate other engineering data. So part of the Arcadia reference capabilities. This is a particularly important one. Uh, because it's, it's what we need and what uh, Arcadia is expected for is not to model, it's to solve engineering issues and to help making a better engineering and a better solution to a well understood need. So uh, this one uh, starts from engineering uh, expectations, uh, challenges, uh, constraints, and try to explain how all the elements that we have seen previously and, and notably the high-level uh, Arcadia activities contribute to solving uh, these engineering concerns. Okay, so it's defined uh, uh, as you can see has a, a set of um, let's say uh, Arcadia application processes, with each of them focusing on solving one engineering concern. So from need to solution, uh, dealing with non-functional issues, uh, managing interfaces. Uh, moving from definition to design and validation, from system to subsystem to hardware to software, uh, dealing with uh, agility both at system and uh, software level, uh, managing product line uh, and projects based on product line and uh, introducing value-driven engineering. All these are described uh, in terms of uh, some uh, processes uh, each of them being described by, as you can see, uh, a quick description and the detail of how each of the former Arcadia activities contributes, uh, in the text uh, description below, contributes to reaching these uh, expectations uh, in this uh, suggested process. Okay, so this makes the bridge between the high level views that we have seen in. Uh, uh, engineering landscape and uh, the different Arcadia uh, activities, perspectives, processes, and so on. Okay, and as I mentioned, the last one uh, uh, is the meta model. So the meta model, I don't details into more detail. It's the one which is present in uh, in uh, the Arcadia book. So with the different uh, formal representation. 
to some extent formal representations and uh, of course uh, the, the description uh, of each concept which is also uh, taken from uh, the book itself okay. so this is the official description of the, of the language and questions and answers at last we reach uh, them so uh, these are a set of questions that has been raised and they have been a bit organized as you can see in blue here and i've just sampled a few ones just for you to have a, a high level view of what you can find inside so we start from uh, acadia core perspectives so from operationalizes down to physical architecture and uh, for example try to uh, uh, to give some uh, Clues on uh, what kind of approach should be followed for uh, operationalizes. Uh, uh, do we need both logical architecture and physical architecture? Uh, if we consider a language specifics, uh, for example, why do we put functional exchanges uh, only on leaf functions? Uh, should we use func uh, functional chains or should we use scenarios? Uh, how many inputs and outputs ports should we have for exchanges? When to put one port, when to put several? Uh, in terms of model building, uh, what are the frequent mistakes, of course, not exhaustive as you can imagine. How to define and justify interfaces between components. Should we use textual requirements or model and, and more details on requirements uh, and the way they are managed. Uh, where to stop operationalizes, uh, operationalizes being a, a, key, uh, a key feature in, uh, in Acadia, but usually felt as not so natural for uh, traditional engineering. Uh, how to model communication components, how to model the environment and physical sensors and so on. Some elements related to engineering life cycles, such as uh, the order of the modeling activities, is there definitely one or several, how to adapt, how to confront an existing system with a new need, and uh, what kind of documents can be produced from the models. And a kind of conclusive uh, chapter on Arcadia comparing to other approaches. So it's not a full detailed uh, description, of course, just some uh, hints on, uh, on uh, what we have tried to stress and why we built Arcadia that way. Uh, so that will turn into a kind of conclusion of all these features uh, expressed in this last uh, answer. OK, that's the. Uh, most uh, of, of the material that uh, I wanted to bring to you uh, uh, today. So you will find that uh, available uh, in, uh, in the Capella website. Uh, I would like just to show you um, uh, another point, um, which is that uh, uh, people have also asked for uh, more advanced capabilities of navigating between all those notions. Uh, 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 as compared to the more linear uh, documents that you have seen up to now. So, for example, which activities produce a given data? Where is the data used? Uh, how is data related to others? Which one are built from it? How does this activity contribute to engineering concerns? And so, so what we have uh, built is a, um, a broadable web version of what you have uh, seen quickly in the documents that I have presented here, of course, except the book and questions and answers, but the other documents are uh, translated in a, in a more navigable uh, way, uh, which is um, uh, web oriented. So let me show it to you quickly. So you have a welcome page, uh, as you can see, in, uh, in uh, the HTML output of uh, Capella, except that it has been uh, uh, adapted, filtered, and simplified in order to reach the, the goals of uh, this uh, reference. And uh, so you have the different elements, as you can see, of, uh, engineering landscape and, uh, and uh, um, user guide, and also uh, uh, reference manual a few more uh, elements uh, so for example uh, how do each of the uh, engineering stakeholders uh, take benefit from the different elements produced in the, in the Arcadia and Capella model for each of their activities uh, and uh, and of course all this is uh, na uh, navigable because you have the full detail of elements and you can go to a description of activities with uh, 
the way they are used, where they are displayed, and uh, and uh, possibly uh, data as well uh, produced, uh, what uh, those data are built from, and uh, the kind of um, elements uh, that produce uh, these data and that use these data as well, uh, and the usages of this data and so on. So you have uh, hopefully room for you to play and possibly even to have fun. Maybe. Okay, so this is uh, the web version, which is also uh, available on the Capella website. And for those who are really eager of going one step further, they can even uh, address the Capella model, which is the source of all I have presented to you right now. I have built a model where, in which I uh, that I have used in, in order to structure, link uh, all uh, those uh, uh, description information uh, on Arcadia. So uh, it's uh, it's a kind of um, Arcadia model of Arcadia, where you can, of course, take uh, the full benefits of Capella, but of course, uh, paying the cost of a bit more complexity in order to uh, to get the powerful uh, capabilities of uh, Capella as well. But you can access it. It is also available on the website. So for advanced users who are interested in how I build the model, uh, just to give you a very quick view, I won't detail, we have seen different uh, documents here, Engineering Landscape, Use Guide and Reference. And this is the way they have been articulated uh, in the model, so uh, which is uh, fairly uh, Arcadia compliant, of course. Uh, so uh, if we want to describe uh, the different engineering stakeholders, who is interested in applying Arcadia and for which purpose, and in which processes uh, uh, are they involved and so on. Of course, we use operational analysis. When we want to uh, uh, define expectations and scope of Arcadia itself in, on, in answering to this uh, operational need, of course, this is the place for system need analysis, where we can describe services expected from Arcadia so as to fill uh, uh, engineering operational uh, needs and purposes. And in terms of solution, as you can imagine, uh, the user guide is a logical architecture describing how all those services are turned into uh, activities uh, using data and, and uh, processes, let's say functional chains, uh, that take benefit of uh, all these activities and data. And of course, the reference is a physical architecture where we go into deeper details, uh, both in terms of data, in terms of uh, activities uh, described by functions, as you can imagine. <clears throat> so last question that I would expect you to ask probably how those documents were generated, because it might be useful for you. So the source, as I mentioned, is the Arcadia model that I've made available uh, for you on the uh, Capella website. And generation is automated. So for the Word and the here PDF documents, we use uh, uh, OBO and Tudoc uh, generation template technology, uh, so with uh, automatic uh, generation. And for the browsable Word version, as I have uh, expressed quickly uh, previously, uh, I started from the Capella native HTML generation, so which is a, a native one. Uh, but, of course, it's a bit uh, uh, model and technical uh, uh, oriented, so I post-processed uh, this uh, HTML uh, uh, site uh, in order to, uh, to simplify and to filter the notions. Uh, so speaking of engineering activities, rather of, or uh, of physical functions, for example, uh, to hide the representation details of a model, which are not necessarily relevant for uh, this purpose, to reorganize the presentation of notions, and to add shortcut links, for example, between data and activities that produce this data. Okay, And, and I've done that just uh, using a dedicated Python application, which just browses and modifies the HTML files. And, uh, and it, it, it's also a way for me to, to realize how powerful uh, and not so costly uh, the, the means that we have to manage and to exploit the model are. And, uh, and this really is something uh, interesting and valuable for the future. That's all. I hope that uh, all this will be useful for you. Now, uh, it's up to you, but you have already uh, 
be uh, uh, great supporters uh, of the method and thanks for that and thanks also for your adoption of the tool uh, we are really grateful to all of you uh, for all this uh, community that grows and that is really highly active dynamic and, and uh, um, proactive more uh, thanks a lot for supporting Arcadia and Capella and I really hope before uh, all that you will enjoy it and take pleasure uh, on that thanks a lot and bye bye to all of you Okay, thank you very much, Jean-Luc. And uh, uh, I think I can uh, speak in the name of the community to say thank you for putting all that together and making it accessible to the community. Uh, so before we end uh, this webinar, of course, there will be the questions and answers. So we'll go over that. But before that, I want just to take two minutes to share my screen and show everyone uh, where you can find all that online so you should now be able to see my screen which is basically uh, the capella website as you are used to seeing it eclipse.org capella and very recently we have added all the material that jean-luc presented uh, just now uh, in two sections specifically the reference documents and the questions and answers so that's where you will find all that online and now i'm sure that there is a, a peak of uh, <laughs> access to the capella website uh, so on the first one the arcadia reference that is where you will find this very useful table that tells you uh, depending on what you are trying to find uh, where to look for and all the reference documents specifically the reference for the activities the data model the capabilities and all, and all the rest. And the questions and answers have been uh, formatted and put online here. So they are sorted like in the Word document that Jean-Luc presented, but uh, really uh, adapted to the website. So that is where you can go and find so many answers to so many questions. I love it. Uh, and finally, the Arcadia reference is also online. So this is really, uh, uh, the last uh, thing I believe uh, Jean-Luc presented, I don't remember exactly when, but that's where you will find uh, the uh, output of the model Jean-Luc was just mentioning with all uh, what has been modeled on, Cap on Arcadia and all the navigable links that you can uh, go to to uh, well, fetch information about Arcadia and how to use it uh, and all that. So this is where you will find all the material online, uh, along with the model that was used by Jean-Luc to build all that, which is downloadable from this link here. That's all I wanted to share. And now it's time for the Q&A. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, the most voted question, Jean-Luc, is uh, this one. <clears throat> Can you briefly explain what is the difference between the data model and the meta model? Yes, I suppose that it's, it, it's in the documentation that I have presented right now. Uh, if so, yes, uh, the meta model is a formal description of the language, uh, of the Arcadia language, not the implementation uh, language in Capella, which is, of course, more, more technical and more precise to some extent. Uh, so the meta model is a formal description, uh, while the data model, which is presented uh, especially in the uh, Arcadia reference document, is uh, mainly uh, a kind of pedagogical uh, uh, presentation of the different concepts and their uh, interrelationships. So it has no pretension on being neither exhaustive nor uh, uh, formal, but just to uh, express the main um, uh, concept and the way they are related to each other. You have just noticed that th those uh, uh, elements of the data model are also uh, mentioned in the uh, major uh, core activities uh, in order to explain how uh, each of them is created uh, uh, based on uh, other existing data. So it, if I had to do that on the meta model, it would have been much more complex and hard to understand. So I add this data model, which is an kind of uh, 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 hopefully better understandable presentation of major concepts. 
Okay, thank you, Jean-Luc. The next question is a bit long to read, but let's go. I wonder if there is a stage before operational analysis concerned with the analysis of the problem or undesirable situation, as OA seems to focus on the working operational end state. Is there any guidance on identifying and understanding the operational problem as part of ISO 15288 business and mission analysis, perhaps? Uh, yes, uh, you are perfectly right. Uh, uh, I hope you will find some answers uh, in the questions and answers. Uh, definitely, uh, you will see that uh, in, in the document. Uh, definitely, ACADA doesn't pretend to cover the full scope of all engineering, including uh, what you mentioned of uh, high-level uh, business and mission analysis. So yes, ACADA comes to address part of uh, this global concern uh, of engineering and beyond. Uh, uh, but as you will see also, there are some means to bridge both and to position one regarding to uh, each other. So you will find some, uh, hopefully, some uh, answers uh, in the Q&A. Thank you, Jean-Luc. Then the next question. People are very talkative today. I was wondering if there is some best practice guidance on migrating an existing model to start using REC RPL. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the person explains that there are many steps involved currently in Capella. Uh, I, I don't know if you want to say a few words on that, Jean-Luc. Uh, well, uh, probably not first because I'm not the, the best expert on that. Uh, and because it relates more to uh, to Capella and to the, uh, what we are able to do according to the state of the art, uh, technological state of the art today. Uh, so, uh, no, I, I think I, I will not uh, dare addressing this step. Sorry, I, I will keep focused on uh, Akeda. Okay, no problem. I understand very well. It seems a bit out of scope for today. Uh, let's see this one. Is there any information on this documentation about how to use Arcadia method in combination with system of systems aspects supported by, for example, UAF standards? Yes, has a, uh, it, it meets a little bit uh, a question uh, uh, that came before. Uh, yes, I have some uh, elements uh, in the Q&A that deals with that, not specifically UAF, but you have to know that uh, uh, Acadia has been made uh, uh, in order to be interoperable with, uh, let's say, architecture frameworks, uh, uh, not to substitute to them, but rather to uh, to bridge and ensure continuous continuity uh, uh, with them. Uh, so hopefully you will find some answers about that. Okay, thank you, Jean-Luc. The next question will be this one. According uh, to the Q&A document presented, we should be able to select LA or PA or both, but unfortunately in Capella, we cannot select LA or PA. We need to use LA. I, I, do, not think, I do not think that is actually true. Um, Jean-Luc, do, do you have any opinion on that? Uh, yes, uh, here again, it's more Capella than Arcadia related, but to be quick, uh, we have several projects where uh, uh, they, at least they start, uh, with only physical architecture. Uh, in, in, in many cases, they add later uh, a logical architecture, but at least they start from physical architecture. So you're right, it's not so convenient and, and you have some limitations uh, uh, in, uh, in Capella that could be improved, but you have room for, uh, for uh, uh, dealing with only uh, physical architecture as well. Here again, I'm not the best, uh, best expert to, to uh, answer it, but you have means to do so and you should not stick to LA only just because uh, you would not be able to uh, to manage that carefully in, uh, in, in Capella. Definitely the method should lead uh, the need and as you can see in the questions and answers uh, it's it's necessary to be able to do so and it's not so impossible in Capella too. Okay thank you Jean-Luc. Um, then we have a question about uh, generating document from Capella models. I would like to know about document generation from the model currently the tool used, which is M2Doc, is quite complex. Yeah, maybe, but that's actually working and <laughs> you just proved it. And any yes. comment about that? Yes, uh, well, uh, I don't know whether it's complex, but I succeeded in using it in, a, in, a, in a, let's say, in a, a few days. 
so if I succeeded, I am pretty sure that you can do it as well, at least in order to produce what I wanted to, to do. Uh, uh, it, it, it's quite powerful. Some things are, uh, some advanced things are uh, a bit more tricky, but it, no things that I have felt uh, uh, impossible to reach and, and w in a limited time, in my opinion, and according to my availability. So hopefully you will have the same experience. Thank you. Then we have a question about UML SysML compared to Arcadia, apparently. So in UML SysML, we have something called activity diagram. Is there a substitute for Arcadia method where similar capabilities can be described? If so, what uh, is your suggestion? Well, uh, I, I would say uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, we have some some uh, some uh, let's say some diagrams and some uh, model constructions, uh, mainly around uh, uh, functional chains, where you can have some uh, some. Uh, I would say uh, uh, data related dependencies between activities, uh, if I take the UML CML uh, term, uh, uh, along with sequence uh, links, uh, sequence oriented uh, links and dependencies. So uh, we have some similarities, uh, not fully uh, uh, compliant, but we have some similarities. But more important, we have some, we have some deliberate differences with. Uh, the uh, CSML uh, activity diagrams. And I suggest you to uh, read both the question and answers uh, items related on this subject and also the, the, uh, the web page, I think, which is available uh, in the Capella website as well regarding comparison between uh, CSML and Arcadia. Yes, and I even, only, but yes, uh, I we even... have specificity. Uh, sorry for the interruption, Jean-Luc. I, I just wanted to mention that I believe there is also a webinar available on the uh, YouTube channel of Capella uh, about uh, the comparison between uh, CSML and uh, Capella, uh, Arcadia. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, then we have um, three minutes left, so let's go. Um, are there any resources related to how exactly you can model together several releases using Capella, something like modeling the entire future scope platform, but they're using only a subset for different releases. Ideally, well, no, I think that we cannot address that uh, today. Let's uh, sorry for the, the author, but uh, it's more uh, here again Capella and deployment related, and we have not. Uh, yeah, Ma maybe you can try your luck by going to the questions and answers on online and browse through them. Maybe you will find some useful material there. Uh, okay, sorry, Jean-Luc, then um, I'm trying to find, uh, there are questions about resources on co-simulation. I believe it's the same uh, answer for you. Yes. And uh, will the resources be shared? Yes, uh, and everything's online. Uh, so, yes, I believe uh, we have gone over all the questions and yeah for the rest we are out of time so thank you once again very much Jean-Luc for your time and for putting all that together and making it available I really personally think that is so great <laughs> so that makes me very happy uh, and I'm sure the community agrees with me uh, I will just uh, go back to the slides to conclude this uh, presentation um, while, while you're finding your slide, I just want to mention that this is the, just a starting point. Please, all of you, feel free to correct, uh, criticize, complement all this material because it has to live and it will live if you try and experiment uh, it and trying to uh, make it evolve as well. Thanks a lot. Yes, that's true. And that's what makes a community discussions and arguments and all that well just to conclude uh, the next events i want to advertise for three upcoming events first of all our next capella webinar in this series will be held on july the 11th uh, and it will be uh, given by ansys about connecting capella and model center to analyze system architecture so stay tuned in this uh, webinar series on july 11th then we'll have the 33rd uh, annual INCOSIM International Symposium, 
uh, that will be held on uh, July uh, 15 to the 20th. Uh, so that is going to be a hybrid event and, uh, of course, very interesting for all the MBSC and Capella community. And finally, I want to advertise for the upcoming Capella Days 23. The call for proposal for Capella Days is open. The deadline for that is uh, by the 1st of October this year. So you can uh, submit your proposals to uh, present and give talks at Capella Days. Uh, Capella Days will be held on November from the 14th to the 16th.